we're here talking about the Nano Swivel Lock Anchor. We're very excited about this. Uh, the anchor itself is, you can see here at the top, is, uh, is a 2.5 by 7 millimeter anchor. It's a, a, a peak tip with a fork tip anchor and a uh, titanium body. Um, the kit comes with uh, two K-wires that are 0.86 millimeters, which translates into an 034 K-wire. And you get two of those. And there are two drills, which is a 2 millimeter drill and a 2.2 millimeter drill, depending on whether or not you have hard bone or soft bone. Of course, we still have our standard uh, drill guide here, which has a uh, depth stop on it built in to make sure we drill uh, the appropriate depth. You can see the uh, laser markers on the K wires, which are about eight millimeters in, in length. That tells you the depth that we need to drill for the K wires. So we're here today. We've got a right hand specimen. We're going to be using the Nano Swivel Lock Anchor, which is the 2.5 by 7 millimeter anchor with the peak eyelet and uh, titanium body to fix a uh, collateral ligament at the PIP joint of the right long finger. As you can see, we've already pre-dissected this out and the collateral ligament is now free from the uh, proximal phalanx right here. So the technique will be to place a couple of K wires across, obviously one proximally and one distally. We're gonna do an anchor proximally first. And in our anchor, we're gonna have a uh, suture tape, which is 1.3 millimeters with a 4.0 fiber wire. And we'll show you how this is done. So we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, 0.86 millimeter K wire in here. And this will be in the footprint of where the uh, collateral ligament had pulled off from here. You notice I keep the finger slightly flexed so as to not over tighten the repair. So we'll drill this pin in and you can see that there is a depth stop on it. We'll go all the way down to that stop. And then on the distal pin, I've made a uh, space just distal to the collateral ligament and actually made a little small opening where I'm going to be able to put this in so that uh, we don't get any soft tissue intertwined. This is just near the distal edge of that footprint distally around the middle phalanx. And again, we push that right down to the, to the black laser line. We're going to go ahead and show what that looks like as we check our position for the K wires on the uh, fluoroscopy. Okay, now we'll take our two millimeter drill bit again. Then you have a 2.2 and a 2.0 drill bit depending on whether or not the bone is hard bone or soft bone. And again, the depth gauge is a, uh, causes a stop so that you don't drill too far here. So you can see here we have a, a simulated PIP collateral ligament tear. Uh, the uh, ligament has been lifted off proximally where it's torn from. You can see the instability and how much this gap's open in the joint prior to, uh, prior to the repair. Now that we have our anchor loaded here, We've got our 1.3 millimeter suture tape and our 4.0 fiber wire. We'll go ahead and place that in the proximal side first. And it's important to note to make sure that this anchor body is flush up against the bone before you start to turn the, uh, the anchor and try to advance it. It's important to have that. Although if for some reason you don't do that and the anchor uh, eyelet and the body separate, you can reload these. That's the great part of using uh, swivel lock anchors. So now we've got our suture tape and our 4.0 fiber wire. We'll only be using one of the uh, limbs of the suture tape. We'll use that in just a second. For now, we'll go ahead and use the 4.0 fiber wire to do our repair. So again, this procedure is uh, presuming that you have good tissue to repair back. And indeed, in this case, we do. And you can do whatever stitch you prefer, whether it be some sort of simple stitch or you can even do a mattress configuration. If this is a reconstruction situation, you could certainly just use a 2.5 millimeter Tino screw. And now we've got our repair here, and we'll go ahead and tie that down. So again, we'll use just one limb here, and this is your internal brace component. This is why we've drilled the uh, second drill hole distally. If you're not sure where your hole's at, again, you can kind of re-find that hole by putting your K-wire back in. Pretty easy to find that right there. So this will be coming right over the top of that for your internal brace. And we'll go ahead and bend that a little bit just to make sure we're not too tight on that. Nice thing about these swivel locks, they generally will tension themselves. You load it in the uh, eyelet and it will slide in generally pretty easily for you. Just slow, gentle, even pressure. And 
and you can cut the remainder of that with a blade. And there's your final construct. You can see no more gapping, very strong there, and nice solid repair. Post-operatively, uh, we try to get them moving uh, pretty quick, and so we try to get range of motion going fairly quickly. I let the wound heal up for about the next seven to 10 days, and I start general range of motion uh, pretty quick right after that.